Hello there, this is David Wormsey and in this video we're going to look at the Beaver Builder Editor and how we can customize it for clients and also restrict their access. We're going to look at how we can hide various elements like the Beaver Builder logo, various buttons in the toolbar and sections on the right here that contain modules and save rows. And I'm going to be revisiting an earlier video that showed how we could prevent clients from being able to open up various modules columns and rows and I've improved upon this by making it role based and that's how everything in this is going to work we are going to set up an account for a client that has a different WordPress role to us as administrators and I'm going to use the editor role in this case so they will see an entirely different view to what we see so that's what we're doing in this there will be a blog post with it there will be all the links in there and the snippets that you might need but before we go on to my modifications I wanted to talk about what's already available in the Beaver Builder plugin because it already gives us a powerful way to restrict what clients can do. So we'll take a look at that first. So we need to go to the back end of our WordPress install and we'll need to go into settings, into page builder and into editing and here we have the dialogue for this now by default it is set here so the editing capabilities are set to edit underscore post now what that means is that everybody except a subscriber will get to see the same as what we see here so whether they're an editor a contributor or an author they will see exactly the same but we can change this and if we go to the beaver builder knowledge base we'll see that there's an article here i'm not going to cover this in detail but what we're going to do is pick this one update core which means that only the administrator gets the full access so let's go over here and paste this in into both here. Now you do two different things. This really is just about restricting global rows and modules as a separate thing. But in this case, we're just going to disable everything. So let me just save this. And I will just show you that I have created a, an account already. So let's just go over to our users. So I've got one called client here and I've given them the role of editor. So what we need to do next is to open up another browser and log in really as a, as an editor. And I've already done this. So I'm already in on another browser. I'm using Firefox on this. I could have used incognito mode, but it seems to be playing around a bit at the moment. So here we are. I'm in there. Now, if I go in and open up the page builder now. And that's what we see now there's a quick flash of the sidebar there and um, this is what most people see but I am actually using a plugin called peekaboo which is adding this quick way of being able to preview the results and um, save and get out of here so this wouldn't normally show on yours unless you're also using peekaboo but what you would see is just the done button and what clients can do now is very little they have uh, no access to be able to move around modules add new ones they've just got this wrench uh, a tool icon or for those who pick me up for being British and not saying spanner the spanner icon um, and they can just click in there access this now they're still able to see these tabs here so they're able to do some styling or advanced work and if you're using any of the add-on plugins they will have more tabs but we can disable this and let's let's move on to now what we can also do so uh, let's say we want to we're happy with this but we also want to stop them from being able to access certain modules or we also want to get rid of the beaver builder logo over here and let's say we do want to actually stop them being able to see the advanced tabs or any of the tabs. So I can show you how to do that. There is a slight danger if you are using the third party plugins, you probably don't want to disable all the the, uh, uh, the tabs themselves because they may contain things that you need. So it'll work fine if you're using just Beaver Builder modules because the advanced tab and styling tabs are all the same. But so just be warned on that one. So let's go and do that now. Um, I'll just move away from here. Now we need to get to our folder for our theme. Now this will work on every theme, but I'm using the Beaver Builder theme in here. So I'm going to go into the child theme. And the first thing that we need to do is to go in and add a snippet to functions. Now this is, of course, in the blog post. So I'm just going to open up functions PHP. And this is the snippet already loaded. Now what this does is check to see what we are logged in as. 
and adds a body class and that body class can then be styled. So what it's actually adding is a role dash and whatever our role is. Now it actually doesn't matter what role we're logged in, it will create that body class. So if we're actually using a plugin which allows us to create our own types of roles and set whatever access we like, it will acknowledge that. So if we've got one of those plugins where we can create a role called client, then it would pick up on that and display client. And we're gonna use some CSS and I've got some examples over here. And what I've done with these is that I've mirrored this. So we're using the role of editor. So every bit of snippet that I've got here has been set up for the role of editor. So we're just styling what this functions PHP is outputting. Now, one thing I've just quickly covered now, if you're not, you know, comfortable with working in the files there and you like to work from the back end of WordPress, this is not advised particularly, but you can go into the back end if you just go into appearances and into editor, and then you will be able to find the functions PHP and style sheet from there. And you could paste these in directly. The danger with this is that uh, typically people will forget a little bit of the code and uh, they will end up in a problem there. And I, right, okay, that's the one that usually gets lost there. It's the curly brace there. You miss that off and you break your side. So, but if you you want to do it that way that's fine okay so let's have a look at our examples here and I've got my style sheet already opened um, from my from my folder with my child theme in it so I've already got this open in my editor here and I'm going to paste across my examples into my style sheet and these will be in the blog post so you can do the same so the things that we were trying to do or oh, the things that I said I was going to do I've got the snippet over here so I'm just going to copy and paste this over to the actual style sheet and we'll just quickly talk through what these are doing so this first one there is if you're role based here it's going to remove the logo the image logo display none this is going to hide all of those extra tabs and um, with beaver builder that's just style and advanced and could be useful but as i say if you're using one of the third party plugins you might not want to use this and remove this snippet and also the last bit it refers to that earlier video where i showed us how we can make certain sections non-editable and that's the styling that goes with this but how it's working is it's using the pointer event set to none so no one can click on things or rather somebody who's logged in under the editor role will not be able to click on things that we've set with a class of no edit. So that's the key thing in the front end and I'll show you this, we are going to add no edit without the dot to our modules or our columns or our rows and that will make them unclickable. So I need to make sure that I save and then we need to go over to the client's browser on Firefox and give that a hard refresh. And all being well, this logo will, as it has disappeared there, so we'll just check that all the CSS is working. We'll go into one of the modules and see if one of the tabs has gone, that has gone. So we've just got one last job to do and we need to make a section uneditable. I'm gonna take this section here. In fact, instead of a module, I'm gonna take a whole column. Okay, so let's go back to our administrator browser and make sure that we're in the page builder. And if you remember, I need to just take over there. If you remember on the CSS, I put this in of no edit and I don't use the dot here. I just need to add that selector into our editor. So let's go back into the page view, go into the page builder and we'll scroll down this section we said we take, we'll go into the edit columns column settings and into the advanced tab and down the bottom here is where we can add our selector and we need to make sure that it's in the CSS class because it's a class because it has a dot so okay so we can put that in no dash edit and we'll save that and as you can see it's actually it's actually given us a visual clue even as an administrator uh, and I put that in on purpose so I thought if we were strict in lots of modules it might be easy to lose track of which ones were non-editable to clients so I've put that in there and if you know something about the CSS you can change that so okay let's save that now and make sure that it actually is uneditable 
So we'll go back to the client browser and again, we'll do another refresh. And let's take a look. And there we are, it's added this as well that says it's not editable and sure enough, they cannot click anywhere on there. So that's done that and I'll just go in and publish those savings there. Okay, so let's imagine though that we actually want to bring back some of this. So we actually want to bring back the sidebar so they can drag in some modules here. Well, we're gonna have to go back and obviously reset from the admin side the capacity settings. So we'll move that back now to edit post. Okay, and we'll save that. So that's the admin side back again over to the client view. And there we are, they're back in again now. But the problem is now we've got all the other things in, we've restricted that area and we still got rid of the logo, we still got rid of the columns. Uh, or rather the tabs in each of the modules. But uh, now, of course, you can see here that it can do other things now. They can uh, move things around, they can delete uh, modules, but we could restrict that. So let's, it, just because we can go on with CSS and all the examples I've got removing things all day long, really, let's just take a couple of examples. Let's say we don't want our clients to access templates and say we don't want them to go to help either. So let me go and get rid of this and go back to my sheet that had my examples. And of course, this is in the blog post. So I've collected these and here we are on this one. I've got some buttons and module sections. So if we can read these and you'll need to do that on the blog post as well you will be able to see there's the help button so it's fairly logical you should be able to work it out we'll copy and paste that and add it to our main style sheet i'll stick it on the bottom and we'll go back so that's the help button and we need to find the template one as well and there we are the template button is there templates button quite simple We'll grab that back over to our style sheet and pop that below there. Okay, and we'll save. And just to show you that this does actually work, I'll just go over to the client's browser and do another refresh. And if we look over here at templates and this button over here for help, we should see them disappear. And there they are, they've gone. So, uh, let me just quickly cover what you'll find in the blog post. Um, so I'll go back to my examples again here. So I've done a few sections here. We can also, as mentioned earlier, we can, oops, let's go to the right one. We can also remove some of these module icons. So if we don't want them to be able to remove a module, we'll just pop that one in. If we don't want them to be able to copy, we can do that. If we don't want to move, we'll just copy that one into our CSS style sheet. Now, something to say on this, that's an awful, we wouldn't want to be using this too much because, I mean, I am considering turning this into a plugin where it can load the CSS from the back end, but I really don't know what our requirements are yet. So at the moment, anything you're pasting in there is going into your main style sheet, which is also um, there for visitors. Obviously it doesn't affect visitors, but it's just extra weight. So you wouldn't want to be using all of the examples I've got. That would be a little bit crazy. So I'd love any feedback that would come back from this. So, okay, that's covered that. Now there was one other thing that I wanted to do in this video, and that was to show you how you could actually restrict the editing of a page. So you can make a whole page uneditable. So uh, what we're going to do, right, and let's go back to the CSS again, back to my example, and I think it's down on the bottom here. There we are. So this blocks a whole page here. Now what this is doing is it's pretty much the same as how we block off the modules, columns and rows. I've got the same kind of style in here, uh, making it non-editable. But what this is doing, doing the same thing with the pointer event set to none, but it's doing it for a whole page. But we cannot with this stick it into our uh, style sheet. We actually need to put this in the front end of our editor. So we'll go back as an administrator and we'll make sure that we're in the page builder. 
and okay we need to go over to tools and then into layout CSS forward slash JavaScript. Now what the Beaver Builder plugin allows us to do is to set CSS and JavaScript on a page by page basis. So when I copy and put, whoops, I didn't grab it properly. Let me just go back and take that snippet and copy and I can paste this in now here. So anything I'm putting in here is only going to affect the current page I'm editing. It will not affect any of the other pages. So let's just save this and publish this, what we've just done. And it doesn't affect obviously the administrator on this because we've already set it. So it's only affecting admin folk. So we'll go over to our client's admin setup. And if we refresh this, it should work. I will say, there we are. Okay, so that's made the whole page uneditable. So that's how we do this. Now, my only thing I would say about this, sometimes this can play up if you're messing from role to role. So sometimes you may have to go in and clear the cache on uh, the beaver builder so over here and clear this if you find that there's any problems with that okay so this has been a long video i've talked about a lot of stuff i hope i haven't lost you along the way and i hope some of this is useful uh, i'd really love your feedback um i will update the blog post as i can and i will uh, I'll just wait to see what you've got to say on it and and change accordingly but thanks very much for listening to me and i will see you in another video thanks a lot Bye bye